Good morning and welcome to St. John's Shaughnessy virtually for this, the fifth Sunday of Lent. We hope that you are safe and are taking care of yourself with the recommended uh, precautions, including social distancing and hand washing. We are glad that you are with us for worship, despite the worrying circumstances due to COVID-19. If you need anything from us, your clergy, or others within the parish, please do let us know. We acknowledge that we gather on the ancestral and traditional lands of the Coast Salish people, namely the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam people. Welcome to the service of Sung Morning Prayer. We've taken many precautions to bring this worship to you. We will remain two meters apart and clean our hands regularly. We will begin with a moment of silence, which starts with the sound of the bell, and the choir and clergy will be processing in. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, that wilt not despise. O Lord, open thou our lips. to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name.
reading from the prophecy of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live." I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God. I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews are just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come up to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, 
Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that you may believe that you se- they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Amen. Put yourself in Mary's shoes. Perhaps at the moment it is not that hard to do. Mary's heart was broken, shattered, really. The pain of grief at the loss of her brother was too much for her to take. She had trusted, she had believed but now it was all for naught. She had been with Lazarus day in and day out. She and her sister Martha had bathed him, cared for him, urged him to eat, comforted him through the grip of illness. They had watched in horror as no matter what they tried, he was getting worse. All their efforts did not seem to be changing anything for him. They watched him get weaker and weaker, thinner and thinner. They heard his breathing change to be much shallower. They prayed that Lazarus would get better. Oh, they prayed and prayed for God to change the situation. They prayed in desperation for God to do something. This could not be happening just before their eyes. She expected Jesus to be there soon, to to arrive at any minute and make it all go away. He was the living God with us, the God amongst us. Jesus knew the compassion and love of God and demonstrated it over and over and over again with so many people. Jesus, their friend and teacher, would be there for her and for her family But Jesus never showed up. They sent messages, they they contacted him, and he never came. He was too busy for them and their situation. It seemed that he had no time for them. And so they watched as Lazarus died. They had waited and waited, but Lazarus had died. Mary was devastated. She was heartbroken. They had the funeral and buried him, and then she locked herself away and was not sure if she could ever come out. God had betrayed her. God had forgotten her. God had ignored her. God was nothing, she decided. 
Now, many people, and, and I know a number like this, might leave it all there. God had not responded, hence there is no God. God had not changed the situation, so why trust in the presence of God? They stay in their anger, their pain, their grief. I wonder if a number of people are feeling this very same way at this time, as we self-isolate and live in fear of what may come. And for many, this is where the gospel story might end. But it didn't. And this is important for us to hear right now. For we heard that Martha came to Mary once again and said to her, The teacher is here and is calling for you. She almost ignored her sister. But Mary got up and ran towards Jesus. She would give him a piece of her mind. But as she ran to him and saw his face, saw his compassion, saw his tears, everything changed. She fell at his feet. If you had been here, my brother would not have died, she told him between sobs. They brought Jesus to the tomb, and he called for Lazarus to come out. As Lazarus came out of the tomb, Jesus' words were meant not only literally, but figuratively for all in attendance. Unbind him and let him go. New life had come where it seemed no longer possible. New hope had arisen out of the ashes. New possibility had descended where it had no right to be. This situation changed Mary completely. Her whole understanding of God and life and her own soul and how they connect was completely changed forever. Unbind him and let him go had become unbind her and let her go. Let go of the pain. Let go of the anger. Let go of the fear. Let go of the resentment and know God was with her. Know that she did not walk alone. She suddenly knew what God with us meant. She suddenly knew that God was standing right beside her. She discovered that God had not abandoned her, but was known to her. In her darkest, bleakest of moments, God was there, visible, vibrant, life-giving, and hope-producing, right there with her, and was urging her to be unbound and set free, something she had been wishing for her entire life. God had shown up. But it didn't end there. She was now called to be Christ to others. She was called to live that love of God in her own actions. She had found that love is at the center of life. This story is about this very situation in which we now find ourselves. Despite our fears, our worries, our concerns, where do, we, where do we discover God coming to us and still whispering those words? Unbind him, unbind her, and let them go. For in this we discover God with us. God is near. God is known. God is amongst us. Put yourself in Mary's shoes who discovered that despite an enormous depth of grief she felt for her brother, God was with her, known to her and present to her. May we too know that we do not walk alone. Despite all that takes place, our heart is still connected to God. Our hope is still founded on God. Our calling is still to compassion and grace. May it affect how we face the doubts and fears around COVID-19 and how we look at our neighbors and those around us. May we be unbound and set free, confident 
in God's grace and God's peace. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. governance, 
to do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord God Almighty, who rulest the nations of the earth, we humbly beseech thee with thy favor to behold our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, that in all things she may be led by thy guidance and protected by thy power. And do the wis with wisdom the Prime Minister of Canada, the Governor General, the Lieutenant Governors and Premiers of the provinces, the Indigenous leaders, mayors and civic leaders, and all who are set in authority, especially in this most difficult time in the history of our world, that all things may be so ordered and settled by their endeavors upon the best and surest foundations, that peace and happiness, health and compassion, truth and justice, religion and piety may be established among us for all generations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, the creator and preserver of all humankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are anyways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those for whom our prayers are desired, Suzanne, Sandra, Holly, Gary, Dylan, Philip, Margaret, Marlene, Sarah, Sonia, Laura, Eve, John, Stephanie, Christiane, Sophie, Rose, and Jack, 
Paul, Soy Lee, Jenny. We remember all those who have died as well. Nellie, Helen, Alice, Wally, Peter, Henry, and Gordy. That it may please thee to comfort and relieve them for all those who grieve and those who continue to pray according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness among the people, continue, we beseech thee, this his gracious work among us. Cheer, heal, and sanctify the sick. Grant to all health care professionals wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience, strength and protection. And send down thy blessing upon all who labor to prevent suffering and to forward thy purposes of love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all people. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.